everyone, this is Catherine and welcome back to Talk Blockchain to Me. So as more and more people around me get into the crypto craze, one question that I have been getting a lot is, what is Bitcoin Cash and how is it different from Bitcoin? To explain this difference, it would first be helpful to learn about forks in the blockchain. So in this video, I'll explain what a fork is, what it does to a blockchain, and how that impacts the development of the blockchain system. Basically, a fork is when a blockchain splits into two different versions. Remember that a blockchain is essentially a software chain of different blocks that contain certain data and transactions. So a fork is a change to the software, and it creates two separate versions of the blockchain with a shared history. Now, why do forks happen in the first place? If you recall, one of the foundational characteristics of a blockchain is the consensus mechanism, meaning that the majority of the participants must agree or be in consensus about any rules and any changes that are to be made to the protocol or program. Obviously, that sort of agreement does not always happen. If you have ever worked on a group project, you know that people have different ideas and different visions of where they want a project to go and how to get there. Usually, the majority will agree, and then the group will head towards a certain direction. The less popular idea is then abandoned. Or let's think about when there are two founders of a company, and they start to have really different ideas of where the company should go. And sometimes when they cannot reach an agreement, one of the founders will leave and go do their own thing. Now, let's apply this back to blockchain. Currently, most of the well-known blockchain protocols are all open sourced. Open source usually means that the source code is freely open and available to anyone who wants access to it. Um, and having access to the source code means that anyone can take that code and modify it however they want to in order to either add features or to change the way it works. So there are two types of forking. There is a hard fork, which are changes that are not backwards compatible with previous rules, and this creates two separate and competing blockchains. Then there is a soft fork, which are changes that are backwards compatible with previous rules, which means that the old version will still remain part of the same network as the upgraded or changed version. To illustrate this better, let's think of this. Let's say Destiny's Child is basically like the blockchain with the old rules, right? So you had Beyonce, you had Kelly, and you had Michelle. And they each got a part in a song. Now, Beyonce wants to go solo and do her Sasha Fierce thing, and she doesn't think that Destiny's Child is super on brand for her. So Beyonce splits from the group in a hard fork, and let's say Michelle and Kelly remain as Destiny's Child. Now, they all have a shared history with songs like Say My Name or Soldier, um, but from here on out, they have become two separate and competing groups. Single Ladies or Crazy in Love have nothing to do with Michelle and Kelly anymore. Okay, now back to the original question. What is the difference between Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash? So obviously I am simplifying the debate a lot here, but for our understanding, here's a basic rundown. So the Bitcoin blockchain, as most of us are familiar with, which is the one that Satoshi Nakamoto created, fits its transactions all onto a block that has a size of one megabyte. Remember that a block is a group of transactions that are bundled up and then validated onto the blockchain. So with a one megabyte block size limit, the Bitcoin blockchain was handling about seven transactions per second. And here is where some people had a problem. An increase in the usage on the Bitcoin blockchain meant that transactions took longer to get onto a block. Also, in order to get your transactions onto a block faster, that meant paying higher transaction fees to the miner. But not everyone wanted this upgrade, so a group of participants hard forked the Bitcoin blockchain on August 1st, 2017, and created Bitcoin Cash. So primarily, Bitcoin Cash focused on increasing the block size from 1 megabyte to 8 megabyte. So interestingly, according to the Bitcoin Cash website, Bitcoin Cash actually has the same exact definition of Bitcoin. And you know, this is obviously not surprising because Bitcoin Cash is a hard fork of Bitcoin, right? So Bitcoin Cash really just copied the code from Bitcoin itself and then just modified the block size rules. As a side note, Bitcoin Cash is not the only fork in the original Bitcoin blockchain. There are a number of others, most recently, um, like Bitcoin Gold, which happened in October of 2017. So what are the implications of forking for blockchain development? So the importance of forking as a feature is best summed up by Fred Erzum, who is the former co-founder of Coinbase. So he writes, 
Forking is a critical evolutionary mechanism for blockchains, just like mutations to DNA in biological organisms allow for evolution through natural selection, forking allows us to run multiple experiments in parallel where the strongest versions survive. Unlike Web 2.0 companies like Google, Facebook, Twitter, etc., forking a blockchain is possible because the current code and state of a blockchain can be freely copied. It is the equivalent of any developer being able to make a copy of Facebook's code and spin up a competing version at any time, something that a Web 2.0 company would never allow. So basically, forking will allow for the evolution of a stronger blockchain ecosystem. In the end, it is the Beyonce of the blockchain forks that will win out. So I hope that was a helpful introduction to blockchain forks, what they are, what it does, and what it means for the future development of the blockchain system. If you found that helpful, please make sure to like, comment, or subscribe to my channel. And until then, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.